Now to start out, we should uh, together go for refuge and put ourselves under the protection of the three rare and precious ones, and then give rise to the enlightened attitude. To this end, let us now mention how the sources of refuge and protection, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, are truly present in front of us in space. Now the second step we imagine how above our heads now appears our Rukdura, 
He sits upon a crouching throne that is being supported by eight lions, upon which there is a lotus flower, upon which there is a sun disk and a moon. On this seat, there sits the essence of all the Buddha of the three times past, present, and future, uh, in the shape of uh, the present seventies and what will continue. Then imagine how from the three places of the Kamapa, first white and red, then blue light radiates, and finally all three lights simultaneously together, and all these dissolve into our own places of body, speech, and mind. After that, we imagine how the Kamapa himself dissolves into light, melting into ourselves, and we then remain inseparably one in this natural state. Hey, So yesterday in the description we left off at the point where 
Dracula, we imagine the Kamapa in the center of the innumerable dark beings of the seven types or the seven colors. We now proceed to imagine how all of these uh, Dakinis of the individual colors dissolve into each other until there is only a single one left. All the white ones dissolve into a single one form, all the red ones dissolve into a single one form, and so forth, until there is only seven Dakinis left, and these surround the Kamapa. <laughs> Legendaranta, so having imagined all of these Dakinis to melt and to dissolve into a single one, uh, we then first um, direct ourselves towards the green uh, Dakini. She here particularly stands for Buddha activity. In front of her, we confess all the misdeeds that have been performed under the influence of the emotional defilement of jealousy. And we then imagine how she radiates green light, which dissolves into herself. This green light dissolves not only into herself, but into all other beings as well. And it is said that in the same way as the early morning sun burns away the morning thought on the uh, on, on a meadow, in the same way all the negativity, all the emotional defilements and obscurations which have been produced through the emotional defilement of envy within us, or the envy <coughs> Uh, and jealousy within us uh, are being completely purified. <laughs> I forgot to say before the green Dakini, she also comes under the name of Kama Dakini. We now address ourselves to the yellow Dakini, who is also known as Ratna Dakini. We uh, particularly confess all the misdeeds and aspirations, all the negativity that has been committed under the influence of the emotional defilement of pride. And we imagine how she radiates yellow or golden light, which touches us and again all other beings, of course, and in this way purifies and completely eradicates all that, uh, all the negativity that has been uh, accumulated under the influence of pride. <coughs> Then we address ourselves to the red Dakini, which is the lotus Dakini or Padma Dakini, and imagine how she radiates immeasurable red light. While she does so, at the same time, we confess all the misdeeds and obscurations, all negativity that has been accumulated under the influence of the emotional defilement of um, of a desire, and at the same time we imagine how this light also touches all other beings, purifying likewise all of these defilements <coughs> within them. <coughs> 
Next, we focus our attention upon the wife Sakini, which is Buddha Dakini, and we imagine how she um, radiates immeasurable light. Being touched by this uh, white light, being completely pervaded by it, we ourselves as well as all other beings, we imagine how all the negativity that has been accumulated under the influence of stupidity is being completely uh, purified and completely eradicated. All the suffering, all the desperation <coughs> and so forth that uh, has come together through our stupidity is being completely eradicated in this way. Next, we focus our attention upon the black Dakini, whose name is Samaya Dakini, who, by, uh, who in her nature is none other than Padmalama or Three David. We imagine how she radiates immeasurable black light or deep blue black light, and how we ourselves and all beings are completely suffused by this light. As this happens, we think that all the negativity, the obscurations and mental defilements which have been accumulated by way of our uh, damaging and breaking our commitments are being completely purified and eradicated. This particularly pertains to commitments which uh, uh, we had in former lifetimes uh, to our gurus, commitments which we made uh, pertaining to our practice of the years <coughs> age meditation and so forth. All the negativity that is being uh, accumulated by way of breaking and damaging and samayas and commitments in such a way as well as all the results thereof are being completely purified. <laughs> And <laughs> We then focus our attention upon the blue Vajra Dakini, who radiates immeasurable blue light. Being touched and pervaded by this light, we are by this light, we ourselves and all beings, we imagine how we are being purified of all the negativity that has ever been accumulated under the influence of the emotional department of hatred and anger. We commit, uh, we confess all the wrongdoings that we have uh, committed under the influence of this, and we are being purified of all the results uh, thereof. <laughs>
Rinne da Dr. Mario Bartosi Nudo Sani, and to go at home on my body, Tate in Jigge, and all of the Jigge, Dr. Tonya Jigo in the top, the Dovata, Nasu Kanin, and the Shapa Provayan. And finally, we focus our attention upon the multicolored visual stuff. She radiates the <coughs> multicolored light. Uh, which pervades ourselves and all other beings, and uh, as this happens, we imagine how we are being completely purified of uh, all obscurations, veils, negativity, which have been committed under the combined influence of what is called the three poisons, which is desire, anger, or hatred, and stupidity. At the same time, as we are being pervaded by this light, we imagine how we uh, confess all these misdeeds that have been committed under the influence of these three poisons and how also all other beings uh, are being purified in the same way as ourselves. And then I give doom to the Sarayi, to the Bankandu Kersayi, and I give doom 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 to the Bankandu Kersayi, Then <laughs> You this particular method of purification, as has just been explained, is known <coughs> is known as the highest, the ultimate and most efficient way of purifying oneself of whales and obscurations and so forth. Even though this is a very simple method, which is free of any elaborations, which is free of any elaborations, uh, it is highly, uh, highly efficient indeed. One might wonder now, why is it necessary that uh, one uh, goes through all of these uh, particular steps of purification? It is said if one does not do so, then it will be very difficult uh, for each and every one of us, for each and every individual practitioner to truly um, receive the blessing and inspiration of one's teacher. So therefore, in the first step, we purify ourselves of our veiled obscurations and so forth. And then finally, we uh, ask for and receive the blessing and inspiration of our teachers, of our guru. Should we not receive that blessing and inspiration, then it will be difficult indeed for us to progress upon the path to, uh, to uh, attain the various insights Standing and realizations which are part of that path. Therefore, such purification, even of such simple and unelaborate nature as has been explained here, is necessary and highly efficient. <laughs> the Rumshi will now read the corresponding words. Uh, from the actual liturgy of the practice. Uh, the meaning of this has just been explained, and as we listen to these words, as Rambachi reads, and this also serves as the oral transmission as we move. <laughs> He <laughs> 
Without proceed to imagine how these seven dark beings dissolve into each other until finally there is only the red dark being left. We then imagine how this red dark being dissolves into light which dissolves into ourselves and in this moment we instantly imagine ourselves to appear in the shape of Vajra Varadi or Dada Pamo as she is now. She appears uh, of, uh, with uh, one face, a brilliantly red body color. She is uh, completely naked except for the adornment of a garland of flowers. Her uh, black hair flows down freely over her back and in her right hand she holds the hook knife while her left hand holds a skull cup that is filled with nectar. She does not in this particular form have the, uh, uh, the uh, pig's face uh, on the top of her head and she has three eyes which are gazing upwards into space. In this particular, particular form she also does not have the kabanga in the crook of her arm as she usually does and it is said that she stands upon her right leg which is uh, extended and uh, her left leg is slightly bent so the other way around as what the palm is usually depicted. She stands in a sphere of light or she radiates a sphere of light and in this way we imagine ourselves to appear. <laughs> Dango we then proceed to imagine after having realized ourselves in the form of Vajrayogini or Vajrayogini in this way, how the Kamapa above us now moves slightly in front of us so that we can look at him, and that this Kamapa then instantly changes into the shape of Korodenchok or uh, Chakra Sambar. He is of blue body color, he smiles <coughs> rustfully, and he has uh, three eyes in his face. Uh, his hair, uh, he has two hands. His hair is being bound up in such a way as to form three knots, a large one, a uh, middle one, and a small one, one on top of the other. Like uh, on, on top 
uh, on the right hand side of the middle knot there is a moon sickle and in front of the uh, uh, of the lower knot there is a crossed butter as a lower garment he wears the skin of a tiger and uh, thrown over his back there is the fresh hide of an elephant with the uh, the uh, head of the elephant of the elephant uh, uh, being visible on his right side and the elephant's tail on his left side. On top of that, he is ornamented with what is called the six kind of bone ornament, not for instance the bone wheel on the top of his head and so forth. He stands within a sphere of, uh, of uh, awareness, light, awareness, fire, and this is the shape in which we imagine the Kamapa to change into. And <laughs> To correct myself concerning the the the, uh, the, the moon symbol uh, that ornaments the uh, hair knots of uh, Paul Depcher, that is supposed that is uh, to measure on his left side, not on the right, as I said. Uh, the knee, for now, to explain these six types of bone uh, bone ornaments that are being mentioned here, these six types are first the bone wheel on his head, then the second there are bone earrings, third there are bone garlands, um, necklaces around his neck. Then fourth, there is a crossed bone ornament across his chest, which is called a seraka. Then fifth, there are the anklets and bracelets, which of course there are um, two, four, eight of which all together, but which are counted as one. <coughs> then sixth, there is the bone, uh, the bone uh, girdle or belt, which is ornamented with bone Hangings. So this is then the sixth one. Oh yeah, there are there are only there, there are six bracelets and ankles. Of course, there are one around each ankle, and then the bracelets. There's one uh, around the wrist and one around the upper. <coughs> so it's six altogether, not eight. But these are being counted as one as the fifth bone on. <laughs> Then <laughs> And Colored and do the bagger on the 
And this way we imagine the Tamapa to have taken on the shape of Kolademchok or Tapan Samara. It says that his hands are in the so called uh, Damudaya Mudra on the top of his head. I think that he has demonstrated that. And uh, that uh, he is standing in a dancing posture. Now we ourselves still imagining ourselves in the shape of Vajravarahi holding the skull cup filled with nectar in our left hand, we extend this start this skull cup towards the uh, power part called Dentro or Tata Sambara and uh, offer this nectar to him. We imagine how he partakes of this nectar and he how he radiates even more light. Then we imagine how from ourselves as Vajravarahi light radiates and invites the Tamapa of Koludensha. Uh, <coughs> we then imagine how he in turn enters through the Vaga, well, the vagina of Vajra Yogini, as which we imagine ourselves, and comes to rest in the center of our own heart upon a lotus and sun. <laughs> So there is a little bit of time left. Are there any questions concerning these 